How's everyone doing? Yeah. Woo! So my name is Henry Guerrero and I'm from uh, UNC Chapel Hill and I'm going to be presenting a joint work with Anita Krasensky who is also in the audience. Um, and this is work where we basically use the principal component analysis to try to better understand uh, behavioral measures and their effects on people's perceptions of their search experience. So I want to begin by uh, motivating uh, the research, so why did we decide to do this? And so in interactive information retrieval, uh, two important questions are essentially how do search behaviors influence, or, or how are search behaviors influenced by task characteristics? Um, so answering this question can help us uh, design tools to support users, and also how are search behaviors, or how do search behaviors influence people's perceptions of their search experience, right? So that can help us evaluate systems by just observing how people interact with them. And so lots of prior work has considered both these questions, for instance, in terms of task characteristics. A prior work has looked at how behaviors differ based on the task type, the task goal, um, the task product, and the task complexity. Uh, similarly, uh, prior work has also ex uh, explored how search behaviors influence people's perceptions of their search experience. So for instance, how are behaviors uh, different uh, depending on people's perceptions of the task difficulty, uh, frustration, time pressure, uh, and engagement. And so a lot of this work has adopted the following approach. So you essentially compute a large number of behavioral measures, and then you look at how they differ based on either task characteristics or people's perceptions. And so in my opinion, this approach has uh, challenges and limitations. And so I'd like to illustrate by taking one of my own papers as an example. So in this work, we looked at people's, um, we examined differences in behavioral measures based on people's uh, post-task perceptions of difficulty. So to do this, we basically computed about 42 uh, different measures from participants' queries, clicks, bookmarks, scroll events, uh, mouse over events, uh, and the session duration. And then we basically used the median split to figure out how these things differ based on uh, whether people perceive the task to be easy versus difficult. And we found lots of different significant differences. Um, now the trick is that some of these differences are easy to interpret and some of them are more difficult to interpret. So for example, we found that uh, query abandonment, both in absolute and relative terms, resulted in greater perceptions of difficulty. Now that makes sense, right? So we can say that uh, searchers don't like issuing queries that don't produce relevant results. And so these are examples of measures that are easy to interpret because they suggest trial and error. But other measures are more difficult to interpret. So for example, we found that uh, more queries also result in greater perceptions of difficulty. And so the trick is that, you know, what does that mean? Um, does it mean that searchers don't like issuing queries? Well, not necessarily, right? So um, the problem is that the number of queries issued during a search session can mean lots of different things, right? So number of queries is influenced by lots of different underlying phenomena. So lots of queries can mean lots of query abandonment, so the searcher is unfamiliar with the task domain and is issuing lots of queries that aren't producing relevant results. But it could also just mean that the user is producing effective queries, but the, the task demands more information. And also, it could just mean that the user is engaged in the task, right? The user is invested in the task um, and is actually issuing lots of queries because they just want to do well. Um, and so this is an example of a measure that is just more difficult to interpret. And so in this paper, uh, we uh, explored the use of principal component analysis to better understand what behavioral measures mean, so what are the underlying phenomena that they're actually capturing, and to better understand how these underlying phenomena uh, influence how people perceive uh, their search experience. And we looked at things like workload, difficulty, time pressure, factors of engagement, and perceptions of knowledge needs. All right, so what is PCA? Uh, what is principal component analysis? So generally speaking, PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique. So um, we're all IR people, so we're probably familiar with clustering. You can think of clustering as grouping data points, and PCA is um, essentially grouping different measures or features used to represent the data points. 
So the output of a PCA is a set of principal components, where the ith principal component is a vari variance maximizing direction that is orthogonal to the previously found i minus 1 components. So to illustrate, uh, suppose that we wanted to do a PCA on this two-dimensional data set, right? So we have a bunch of points in x, y uh, coordinate system. You can think of PCA as an iterative procedure, right? So the first goal is to find um, the fir first principal component, which is denoted here as PC1. Uh, and PC1 is basically the direction along which the data has the greatest variance. So after finding PC1, uh, this, this principal component is effectively removed. In this case, that would basically collapse the entire data along the second principal component, right? So you can think of PC1 and PC2 as representing a different coordinate system to represent the data. Now, um, PC1, uh, sorry, principal component analysis aims to do dimensionality reduction, so in this case, we would represent the data using only the PC1. Um, and so this would give us a one-dimensional representation of the data instead of a two-dimensional representation. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of intuition of what uh, principal component analysis is. All right, so what we did in this paper is we did a secondary analysis of data gathered through, uh, from three previous studies, so study one to study two. These studies had similarities and differences. In terms of similarities, uh, in all three studies, participants were assigned search tasks and were asked to bookmark pages that would be relevant to the task. Now, in terms of differences, uh, study one involved a system manipulation, uh, but no task type manipulation, and study one and study two involved um, a task type manipulation, but no system manipulation. Also, in study one, participants were asked to bookmark a minimum number of bookmarks, so 10 bookmarks, uh, and were given a, a time limit, so they were, they were given 15 minutes of search. And in study two and, and three, they were not given, uh, they were not uh, asked to bookmark a minimum number of pages, and they were also not given a time limit. And so this is going to be important when we uh, interpret our, the PCA results. All right. So just to give you a brief overview, uh, in study study one was a laboratory study. So 32 participants completed four tasks of the same type. Um, and this involved a system manipulation with two different aggregated search uh, systems, two different layouts. Uh, and like I said before, participants were asked to bookmark at least 10 pages in 15 minutes. And after people completed tasks, we measured their perceptions of workload. Study two was a crowdsourced study, so we had 144 participants complete six tasks of different types using the same system. Um, participants were allowed to bookmark as many pages as they wanted and were not imposed a time limit. And then after participants completed tasks, we measured uh, different factors of user engagement. So for instance, focused attention, which measures um, whether the participant felt immersed in the task, Reward, which measures whether the participant felt that their efforts resulted in success, and aesthetic appeal and uh, perceived usability, which measured uh, people's perceptions of the system. This is a lot of detail, so I'm not going to actually cover this, but people completed different types of tasks. We manipulated the task scope, and all you need to know is that some tasks were found to be more difficult than others, so that was an important uh, task manipulation. In study three, uh, this was also a crowdsourced study. Participants completed um, 20 tasks of varying levels of cognitive complexity. Um, each task was completed by 30 participants for a total of 600 sessions. They used the same interface, um, and participants were not asked to bookmark a minimum number of pages and were not imposed a time limit. And then after each task, participants were asked about their perceptions of the task difficulty, the amount of time pressure they felt, uh, and also perceptions about how much uh, knowledge they gained from the task. Yes. So uh, basically, we manipulated task complexity just to cover this in, not in a lot of detail. Participants completed 
a simple task like remember tasks that essentially involve memorization, the tasks that were like mid-complexity that involve comparing and contrasting, making decisions, the highly complex tasks that involve uh, coming up with creative, creative solutions to a problem. In all studies, we computed a large number of behavioral measures, and so these are described in the paper, but broadly speaking, we measured things like uh, related to participants' querying behavior, uh, bookmarks produced by participants, surf level interactions, so in, uh, involving clicks, bookmarks, scroll events, mouse overs, and temporal characteristics, so how quickly did um, participants search and how long did they take to perform tasks. And also measures that characterize the extent to which participants deviated from others, uh, other participants' behaviors. So these are described in the paper. Okay. The other thing is that PCA requires making a bunch of different decisions. So you have to, for instance, uh, figure out how to, the number of components that you want to consider in the analysis. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to discuss these in the talk, um, but I do want to emphasize that we didn't actually do an exhaustive exploration of all these different decisions in the paper. Um, we motivated, well, we explained what decisions we make and sort of provided justifications okay, and recommendations if, if you're interested in doing a similar type of analysis. All right. So again, in the paper we had two goals. Our first goal is essentially to explore PCA as a means to understand behavioral measures and what kind of underlying phenomena they actually capture. So I'm going to go through that first. Um, all right, so before describing our results, I want to point out a few things. Uh, first is that uh, the output of a PCA is a table of component loadings. Um, so here in this table, the rows are behavioral measures, and the columns are different components found by PCA. Now, the cell values are called component loadings, and these are essentially correlation values in the range negative 1 to 1. So each component loading describes the correlation between a measure and a component found by PCA, where higher values indicate a higher correlation uh, between a measure and a component pair. And so here, I arbitrarily highlighted loadings uh, greater than 0.5, and I've also ordered the rows uh, to make the interpretation of components uh, easier. Now ideally, uh, when we get the output of a PCA, the components represent interpretable uh, behavioral phenomena. And so to interpret these components, uh, we have to consider which measures loaded strongly with that component. And so this is a little subjective, and so as I give you my interpretation of these components, you may disagree. So for study one, we found a six-component solution that explains 76% of the variance. I'm going to go through our interpretation of these different components, and I'm going to go in detail for study one, but not so much detail for study two and three. Okay. So PC1 here relates to query abandonment, right? So the extent to which participants issued, query, issued queries uh, that did not yield good results. And so this component involves measures such as number of queries without clicks, scroll events, mouse over events, number of times that the participant quickly reformulated their query, and number of times that the participant issued a query with the same search intent as a previous query, which is explained in the paper. Now, also note that here, number of queries loaded strongly with PC1. And so, in study one, uh, participants completed tasks of the same type and were instructed to bookmark uh, at least 10 pages in 15 minutes. So our interpretation here is that participants issued more queries, mostly due to query abandonment, right? rather than tasks requiring different amounts of information. Uh, PC2 relates to click abandonment, so the extent to which participants produced unsuccessful clicks that did not yield a bookmark. So measures with high loadings with uh, PC2 involve number of clicks without a bookmark, number of clicks, and the task completion time. Now again here, for study one, participants were asked to bookmark at least 10 pages in 15 minutes, so our interpretation is that um, more abandoned clicks 
resulted in greater completion times. DC3 relates to deep surf exploration. So here, uh, measures that loaded highly with DC3 are things like number of mouse over events with or without clicks, scroll distance, um, and number of times that the participant paginated to see the next set of results. DC4 relates to pace of interaction, so how quickly did the participant search. So these, um, this component involves things like the task completion time, um, the average time between search events, and the time to produce the first bookmark. Okay? Now note here that uh, the number of bookmarks had a strong negative loading with DC4, and so our interpretation of this result is that participants who interacted at a slower pace uh, simply bookmarked uh, fewer pages in the allotted 15 minutes. DC5 related to the extent to which participants issued natural language queries, so things like uh, average query length or the number of queries that had question words like what, where, how, uh, etc. And then finally, DC6 uh, relates to how long it took participants to find relevant results on search. So for instance, the time to produce the first session click or the average time between a query and a click. All right. Now the other interesting thing with PCA is that we can see an example of an ambiguous measure, right? So a measure that actually is capturing multiple underlying phenomena. So here, uh, the task completion time loaded strongly with two different components, click abandonment uh, and pace of interaction. Right, so in other words, participants took longer to complete tasks either because they issued more unsuccessful um, queries um, or uh, because they simply interacted at a slower pace. Okay. For study two, uh, we found a five component solution that explains 70% of the variance. Um, in, in study two, uh, we found a lot of uh, the similar components found in study one, so I'm not going to cover these in detail, but we did find one component that was not found in study one, which we interpreted as effort, so PC2. Um, and these, uh, this component involved things like number of queries, clicks, mouse over events, scroll events, uh, number of clicks without a bookmark, and the number of bookmark. So a natural question is, you know, why was effort a component in study two, but not in study one? And so our interpretation is that compared to study one, in study two, uh, we had a task manipulation where different tasks required more effort, and also participants were not given a time limit and were not told to bookmark a minimum, a minimum number of pages. So essentially they had uh, more, less, fewer constraints in terms of how much uh, they could do. Also in study two, we can see an example of an ambiguous measure. So here, number of queries loaded strongly with two components, query abandonment and effort. And so in other words, uh, participants issued more queries when they had more abandonment, or when they, uh, the task simply required more information. In study three, we found an A-component solution that explains 76% of the variance. And so the components here are very similar to the ones in study one and two, so I'm not gonna cover them in detail. But here again, we can also find an example of an ambiguous measure, right? So a behavioral measure that is actually influenced by multiple underlying phenomena. And so in this case, the number of pages viewed by the participant loaded strongly with two different components, click abandonment and effort, right? So in other words, participants viewed more pages um, when they had more unsuccessful clicks, and or when, they, when, when the task simply required more information. Okay. So to summarize the PCA results, um, I want to highlight three important trends. So first, um, not surprisingly, we, we see that um, search sessions are characterized by similar underlying phenomena, right? So things like effort, query abandonment, click abandonment, deep surface exploration, pace of interaction, etc. cetera. Uh, second, um, our results suggest that some behavioral measures are more ambiguous than others. So for example, 
more queries can mean either more query abandonment or simply that the task requires more information. Um, a longer completion time may mean more abandoned clicks or simply a, a slower pace of interaction. Um, and more pages queued can mean more click abandonment or simply a greater need for information. Third is that we found that uh, the experimental design can also influence what a measure means. So in study one, uh, in, in what? In study, in study one, participants completed the same type of task um, and were asked to bookmark at least 10 pages in 15 minutes. So in this study, we saw that the number of bookmarks was influenced by the participants' pace of interaction. Conversely, in study three, participants were not given a minimum number of bookmarks to produce and no time limit. And in this case, the number of bookmarks was mainly influenced by a greater need for information. The second goal of the study was basically to uh, figure out how these underlying behavioral phenomena influence how people uh, perceive their search experience. Now, a natural question is, how did we combine measures to form components? There's more than one way to do this. In our case, we basically combine measures linearly using the component, load as, uh, component loadings as coefficients. Uh, and of course, because behavioral measures have different scales, we first normalize them to zero mean and unit variance. Okay. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is that we can allow a measure to influence more than one component if it's an ambiguous measure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually fly through these results because I think I'm running out of time. Um, what we found is basically consistent with prior work. In study one, we found uh, that all six, all six components uh, had a significant positive effect on workload. In study two, we found several components that had a significant negative effect on perceptions of reward, uh, aesthetic appeal, and perceived usability. In study three, we found several components uh, having a positive effect on perceptions of difficulty and time pressure. And interestingly, we also found that participants reported slightly uh, greater uh, perceptions of knowledge gains when they interacted at a slower pace, meaning that uh, you know, participants perceived that they learned more uh, when they spend more time reading pages and less time searching frantically. Right. So to conclude, um, the paper is really a tutorial on how to use PCA to interpret behavioral measures. Um, PCA is a dimensionality, dimensionality reduction technique, and it can help us interpret behavioral measures and study um, how they influence uh, people's perceptions. Now, why is this helpful? Um, as we have shown, behavioral measures can be ambiguous, and uh, PCA can help us understand what a behavioral measure means um, based on its correlation with other measures that are more interpretable. Uh, we've also found that the experimental design um, can also influence what a behavioral measure is actually capturing. Right? So that's another kind of this approach. All right. That's it. Thank you very much.